Okay, let's start the video. Born in Adelaide, Australia on December 18, 1975, Sia Kate Isabel Furler, better known by her stage name, which is simply Sia, is a pop and acid jazz singer and songwriter. Singing professionally since 1993, Sia has released a number of hits, hitting number one in August of 2016 with her song Cheap Thrills. However, it may be her efforts to disguise herself that make this Grammy-nominated performer so interesting. Sia hides her face either with a wig or prop, or simply by facing away from crowds and cameras in an effort to not be recognizable anymore. The singer has claimed that she hates fame and even released an article called My Anti-Fame Manifesto via Billboard magazine. Specifically, she tries to avoid people critiquing her looks before her art. Though, I have to say, if you're going to wear hair that big to cover your face, how you look is definitely going to be talked about. I don't have that problem. My face is out there. Whether it's in a commercial, on a TV show, or at one of their awesome live productions, when you see the Blue Man Group, you just know that you're about to see something interesting, funny, and unique. The threesome of Chris Wink, Phil Stanton, and Matt Goldman formed the group in Manhattan, New York in 1988 to say farewell to the 1980s and usher in a new decade with random stunts and performances between then and 1991. They only wore blue masks back then, but today the Blue Man Group paint their entire heads a royal shade of blue. And there's actually way more than three of them now too, as the group formed a theatrical company and now have blue men all over the world. Due to this, every member is told to don the now famous blue paint as well as to never speak when in costume. This way, no matter which group you're seeing, you get the same experience as if you would have seen the originals. Before forming the hip-hop duo The Insane Clown Posse, friends Joseph Violent J. Bruce and Joseph Shaggy Two Dope Utzler were part of a gang Bruce created called the Inner City Posse in Delray, Detroit, Michigan in the late 1980s. After serving some time in jail, Bruce and the group moved on from gang life to become professional wrestlers and then ultimately musicians. Channeling their emotion-filled and negative life experiences in into horror-fueled lyrics, the group changed their name while still keeping the gang's initials to prove it wasn't defunct, an insane clown posse was born. After half their members left the group, only Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope were left. The pair still perform today, with their faces painted to look like evil clowns. <laughs> this is due to the dark carnival purgatory theme that ICP emulates, as the pair claim that they're being judged for their previous actions on stage, which is limbo. If you don't like clowns, you're welcome for that part. Founded in September of 1995, the heavy metal band Slipknot has gone through a great number of changes over the years, including the replacing of nearly every member. Of course, the identity of those members aren't as important as most other metal bands, seeing as everyone in the group wears similar outfits while sporting some pretty intense and often terrifying masks. The costumes are all part of the band's goal of creating engaging and chaotic live experiences for their many fans. Like a handful of other masked groups, Slipknot hides their identities not because they're shy, but because they want their music and amazing theatrical performances to speak for themselves without celebrity playing a role, in addition to the fact that being anonymous makes it easier for them to perform. They are truly taking on a role on stage, so it's easier to leave their problems off stage, well, off stage. And I'll tell you, I saw these guys live, Oh man, it's a good show. Highly recommend it. Little terrifying though. 
Born on January 5th, 1981 in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Joel Thomas Zimmerman, better known by the music industry and his fans as Dead Mouse, seems to have no problem with people seeing his face and knowing his real name, unless he's on stage that is. The EDM and progressive house music producer chooses to wear a giant cartoonish mouse head while performing. It's been reported that Zimmerman has quite a number of these different heads in all different shapes and colors, with many of them lighting up or even flashing brightly to the beat of his music. Now he hates being labeled as a DJ, so he wears the headpiece to show that he's different. And you might already know this, but the name Dead Mouse comes from a very predictable place. One day, Zimmerman found a dead mouse inside of his computer, and thus named his alter ego after it, dropping the formal spelling to shorten it so that it would fit as a chat room username. Just another way he stands out. Lots of bands like to hide their identities with cool costumes, makeup, or even flashy bangs that are conveniently long, but others, like the Gorillas, don't show any part of themselves at all. When this group from Essex, England came on the music scene back in 1998, people quickly realized that they were a virtual band, with four cartoon characters standing in for producers Damon Albarn and Jamie Hewlett. The characters Murdoch Nichols, Noodle, Russell Hobbs, and Two D are credited as the actual band behind the music, a move which Hewlett and Albarn say was a jab at MTV's content, which they realized didn't have much substance. To keep with the guys that the music being released by the Gorillas is actually performed by the animated characters, expensive holographic technology and screens are used on stage, with rappers and supporting artists pretending that they're performing next to life size cartoons. So wait a minute, does this mean like, you know, Jessica Rabbit could be like a real thing one day? Ooh, yes, Maddie's happy. On May 13th, 1969, Brian Carroll was born, and if you believe his crazy backstory, was confined to a chicken coop where he was raised by poultry. Of course, being chickens, they would scratch up poor Brian, eventually removing most of his face. But it didn't seem to bother him because he kept to himself watching drive-in movies through a gap in the coop's fence and playing guitar to provide a soundtrack. Seems like a totally reasonable reason to hide your face. Later in life, Brian adopted the name Buckethead, mostly due to the fact that he always wore a face concealing blank mask and a bucket on his head. The bucket itself is a KFC container, which he wears with respect for what his feathered family and friends go through on their way to people's plates. With a wide range of styles he takes on, Buckethead has played with dozens of bands over 63 albums, and all while wearing, you guessed it, the KFC bucket. Is it the same bucket or does he replace it? Cause that ish be nasty. When the American metal band Guar was created back in 1984, their purpose was to make the band that they were opening for, Death Piggy, look better by having a more barbaric feel to their performance, while wearing grotesque costumes and shooting fake blood and other oozes into the crowd. Yeah, see, the thing is though, the members of Guar were the members of Death Piggy. They were literally opening for themselves, but in super weird costumes. But soon, the band of concealed musicians that called themselves the scum of the universe surpassed their real life alter egos in popularity so Death Piggy, well, died and Guar became the headliner. The universe works in mysterious ways. Every member of the crazy metal band stays in character claiming that each come from a different planet or background but were banished to Earth for crimes that they committed across the universe. Yeah, let's not take these guys to our leaders, they're weird. The four original members of KISS, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, and Ace Fraley were influenced by bands like Alice Cooper and the New York Dolls and decided to make their own shows more theatrical and spectacular, hoping to add more art to the music. So the group donned identity concealing face makeup and over the top costumes while leading the trend of having large epic set pieces on stage. Unlike some other musicians, 
musicians who hid themselves because they were shy, Kiss hid their identities as part of the overall rock experience. A seemingly comic book based group of characters, Simmons Demon is a symbol of his dark humor and cynicism. Chris's Catman is a representation of the nine lives he must have had for surviving his upbringing. Fraley's Spaceman is a manifestation of his love of science fiction, and Stanley's Starchild symbolizes the wonder of being a starry-eyed lover. Okay, that's all fine, but how do you explain Gene Simmons' tongue? He's a lizard, man. It's disturbing. In 1993, shortly after having a bad review by Dave Jennings in the British music newspaper Melody Maker, calling their music a daft punky trash, Guy Manuel de Homme Cristo and Thomas Bangaltier left their band Darlin and began experimenting with a more electronic sound. Amused with the review, the pair named their new duo group Daft Punk. These two guys have hit number one on all kinds of charts, with hits like Around the World stronger and get lucky just to name a few. The thing is it takes some hardcore googling to actually see their faces as every time these two perform they do so in large android looking helmets which completely hide their identities. Dubbed the robots, Bangaltier and Dehomme Cristo claim to hide their identities due to wanting to avoid the star system allowing their fans to focus on their music not their celebrity. Huh, I guess they're human after after all. Thanks for watching this guys. Just a reminder that my brand new limited edition t-shirt is only available for two weeks up until June 5th. And once they're gone, they're gone forever. So make sure you get yours now before they sell out by clicking the little eye on your screen now or the link under this video. And don't forget, I'll have a brand new video for you tomorrow at 3 Eastern Standard Time. Have a great day. I'll see you then.